Hello and welcome to TV Retrospective, where we retrospectively look back at TV. I'm Connor. I'm Kyron. And this week's special guest for the Ben 10 TV Retrospective is David. I was going to prepare something funny for this intro, but I've got nothing. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> no, nah, it's fair. It's... Look, the, the whole introducing the guest, because I've never done that before, apart, like, apart from this Ben 10 series, so I'm like, oh, it's always a bit... It's hard work. As a start, but you know, yeah, I hear that. Works. Yeah, do you want me to introduce myself for you? <laughs> I mean, sh- sure. Like, uh, okay. I mean, I make uh, internet content, uh, primarily close readings of different things in pop culture. My background's primarily literature and uh, analysis and stuff like that. I'm also a published author, um, and yeah, I really like uh, media and dissecting stuff from a literary perspective. I don't know that. <laughs> Okay. Our most fanciest guest. Yeah, I don't know. That that sounded like a lot. I just I'm really good at talking shit about stuff is the the better summary. <laughs> and you're more qualified at it than we are. This is possibly true, but I that doesn't necessarily mean I'm making higher quality stuff, unfortunately. That's oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think the previous like the biggest guest we had before was uh, Josh from uh, QUT Hype. Who just Love did it. other podcasts? Outside of that, we've oh, we've had like you know, is it like, um, Eric does the art for all the series, and then mm-hmm. I mean, Kyron is here. <laughs> I am just the guy that's available. That's fair. I that feels like a lot of pressure now that you put on me. So <laughs> I, ho- I hope that I can live up to these grand expectations. Oh, it's all good. It's it's on my it's on my channel, so it's it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I was gonna ask, uh, what kind of brought you to either your original like of the series or why you wanted to watch it in the first place or to the rewatch? Um, I remember vividly. So Ben 10 was on Cartoon Network when I was a kid and we didn't have like pay TV because we were quite poor. But a friend of mine had Foxtel, uh, which is like Australia's version of like paid cable TV. Um, And he would he would like DVR, like he would record his like favorite cartoons and then have them on the on the box or whatever the the system was that that you could do and so my experience with Ben 10 as a kid was watching recordings of these episodes with him and he would always like fast forward through the boring bits um and be like oh here's the action scene or whatever so I don't really have any idea what the show was about I just knew that some of the action was kind of cool and it wasn't until I went back as an adult and rewatched some of it and I started to realize there was actually like a story behind the action and I guess that's kind of how I've come back to it now is retreading some of that ground. That's just funny guy. That was just boring. This uh, fast forward to this there we go. There's the is the diamond heads in this one. Yeah, he's like they're talking. That's lame. Get let's get to the punches and whatnot. <laughs> fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. I mean look, look, when you when you're twelve, like I get it. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh one thing I would like to clarify, so for the previous episodes, uh Karen and I we've discussed that the reason that we thought was, uh, the reason why Ben kept getting the wrong alien was because he keeps hitting the watch, which you're not meant to do, and so that's why he keeps getting the wrong alien. And because Is that not the case? Well, that's what we thought, because we were like, I think that was said in an episode, and so I did a bit of research, and there was this one YouTube channel called The Ink Tank, who does like a Ben 10 sequel webcomic with crossover with Danny Phantom, and they're like what? really big in the Ben 10. <laughs> no, it's like, it's because... That was an insane sentence, Connor. <laughs> Yeah, just to, the drop, to drop, uh, just to drop down, yeah, enough. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, okay. So the reason behind the comic is that they're like, well, Ben 10 was kind of done wrong in the end of it, and same with Danny Phantom, so let's kind of do like a sequel to both of them, five years after each series ended. Mm-hmm. And so they kind of just, apparently, it's, I've read a few bits, it's pretty good, but, um, and they do a lot of videos talking about like the different stuff about Ben 10, like uh, each, uh, each, how, what, every single function of the Omnitrix is and like how like each symbol and what color it represents oh, cool. and stuff and one of the videos talked about like the thing of like uh, why does Ben get the wrong alien and it had the clip that uh, Karen and I were thinking about but what it's but what as so Ben's like hey Azmuth who created the Omnitrix why why every time I why do I get the wrong alien and he goes oh well you're hitting it but because you're hitting it, it's it's randomizing the timeout function, and then he gets distracted by uh, the villain uh, Albedo, who has like the Ultimatrix. Yeah. So what we were thinking was him changing aliens randomly was because he was just hitting the watch hard. Was actually he's because if he's because he is hitting the watch hard, the timeout sequences keep get keep getting randomized. So that explains that why it's so inconsistent uh, about why. 
but so then is there a reason why he can't choose the right alien is he just uh, shit at it <laughs> <laughs> that's what just... i that's my conclusion for some of the scenes in the original series because like sometimes yeah. he's just like all oh, right forearms but he doesn't even look at the watch and just hits it down and goes what do you mean i got gray matter and i'm like that you're stupid <laughs> Does that happen in later series, like in the Ultimate Alien, the Alien Force? Is he is he able to choose the right aliens? I think he is. Uh, in Alien Force, sure he it... is for a bit, but then he breaks the watch. I'm pretty sure when the series gets to Omniverse, he just gets it right all the time. No, he... that's not true, because the is scene it... that we're talking about is from Omniverse. Oh. And yeah, that's I'm like the legit dumb. proper Omnitrix, because the first one's kind of like a prototype. Oh, God. That it goes for like, the first two series. And then the Ultimatrix was made by, like, Asmus's rival, okay. Albedo. And then the official Omnitrix, yeah, it still gets it random sometimes. It's it's never really explained. The best theory I've heard is that, like, it's a supercomputer and it can, and it can read Ben's thoughts based on how the... Current, master control? Yeah, the master control. Mm -hmm. Based on how you can just think of an alien and you can turn into it. This is a beef I'll have throughout this whole season, which is, like, that gimmick of him not being able to choose the right alien makes some of the episodes just egregiously unwatchable. Like, it's just, like, it's very annoying to me because at some point it stops being fun. I had that gripe in, like, four episodes, which we'll get to, but I'm just like, ugh, come on, guys. <laughs> That's fair. Like, sometimes it's all right, especially in, like, season two, because you're like, oh, cool, we actually get to see Grey Matter for once. Yeah, well, because, like, the obvious solution to every problem, which I've noted here it. about eight times is like it's like it yeah either forearms like punch the problem or heat blast because that thing is like super strong can fly and can also solve almost every problem he faces and why he's one of the best aliens this is correct <laughs> and then there's just diamond head which is basically just a freaking MacGuffin in some situations it's yeah like, hey i can make like a crystal whatever the hell we need he's basically green lantern and he can also shoot bullets that basically bullets right he's got gun hands yeah <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Have fun drawing that. <laughs> he's got... Give me Diamond Head, but he's got guns for hands. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so I guess we should dive into Season 4. So, another thing I'd like to note, the DVD, see, the DVD list of episodes is different to how the release schedule is, of how yeah, the episodes I, released. I noticed yeah. that when I was putting my notes together, that in one listing it was... 10 episodes, and then in another one it was like 13. Well, that's because of the Secret of the Omnitrix movie. Yeah. But then, like, the finales are swapped on the... Because there's technically two finales. Yeah. One's a what-if, what? one's the, oh. the part two-parter. And so on the oh, DVD... I didn't realize. On the DVD, the, the what-if is, is, like, episode 8, and then it's Ben 10 versus negative 10, part 1 and part 2. That was what the, I had on my listing, yeah. Where on the actual series release, it's uh, negative uh, 10, part 1 and part 2, and then goodbye and good riddance. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. Yeah, Which that was what I... Uh, I think works better, because I prefer that, like... Because goodbye and good riddance is a good ending. Yeah. Compared to, like, the big two-parter. Wait, um, where does Secret of the Omnitrix sit, then? Uh... <laughs> Between, it's like halfway through Yeah, it's like between episode 4 and 5. Uh, oh, because in my listing, that was at the end. So I've got that as episode 10. This is going to be interesting. All right, you know what? That's fine. We'll I'll read through the titles and we'll just go through them like that. It's, Please it's, do. It's, it's always a mess. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. So season 4, episode 1, A Perfect Day, in which uh, the Forever Knights have captured Ben into his dreams to try and remove the Omnitrix. That's right. And... I, the, my first note here is Gwen has powers question mark I missed something in season 3 <laughs> uh, so in season 2 she gets the power uh, is it season 2 or season 1 in season one 2 she girl. gets the lucky girl oh wait no that might actually be season oh, 1 hang on <laughs> but she like loses that then in season 3 they basically make her a wizard and a ninja yeah that's right okay cause it's like hmm, Gwen doesn't seem to do enough cause you know grandpa's got like 20 guns for every occasion so it's like let's just make Gwen like really overpowered and see what happens that's another thought I've had multiple times this season is like why don't they just always use the guns that, that Max has because in every single situation where they pull out a gun it's almost as effective if not more effective than the magic or the aliens <laughs> Like that that's fair. That's that's just how the guns work. There's guns, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, but so it's like uh season so episode 10 of the first season was the first lucky girl and I think in like season 3 she she stole Charmcaster. Yeah, well cuz yeah, it was like episode 3 of season 3. Doesn't she get lucky girl powers back for a bit in season 2? Yes, that because that episode? was the that was the first uh, in uh, Charmcaster and Hex, the worst villain of all time. In a together episode in season 2. She uses like 
his staff, which is only meant to be used for like the Grand Wizardry and Grand Masters, and she can just use it. Right. Well, obviously, he's not for just Grand Wizard because Hex has. Yeah, it. because Hex can use it, and he's like the dumbest villain. <laughs> I'm impressed at how quickly I've derailed this. Um, <laughs> look, the the other thing in this episode that I really liked is that the <laughs> Ben being a giant. Um, can I swear in this? I don't know if yes, I Yes, you can that. swear. You can swear in okay, this. Okay, cool, because I've already said shit like eight times. But yeah. Ben being a giant piece of shit, um, and the, the anomaly is his family being nice to him. Like, the, <laughs> the conceit <laughs> yeah. of this episode is that Ben is the fucking worst, and his family putting up with him and being nice to him is strange. Like, I'm like, yeah. wow, Ben has some self-work to do. Like, he's got, <laughs> he's the worst. Because that's, like, the same thing that happens in that, because in the Charmcaster episode where Gwen gets the book, she mm-hmm. does body swapping to try and get the Omni tricks, but then she accidentally swaps with Gwen. So when Gwen's nice to Ben, he's like, hang on a second, what happened to you? But for some reason in this episode, it raises no suspicion whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. What the f- come on, guys. <laughs> yeah. It's not the greatest not the written show, but you know. <laughs> I'm not saying plot holes, I'm just saying a little consistency. Uh, also, Ben's cargo shorts. I've, this was the first season I watched in a while. I kind of want his cargo shorts. They seem like they've got a lot of utility. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, his pants are awesome. <laughs> yeah. he's, just like, he's got, like, hella pockets happening and shit. He probably has, yeah, like, like, his sumo slammer cards and stuff in there. That's it. I'm like, get rid of these skinny chinos. He could have more weapons stashed on him than Max does. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's got room. He's certainly got room for it. He just pull out, like, a gun. He should. No, like, the only no- notes I have is, like, one... The Forever Knights are kind of dumb because I haven't seen media in which, like, ah, oh, yes... When we're in his mind, we have control. That's totally how it works. Not he will eventually break out and have control. Yeah, did they just not ever watch, like, The Matrix or that Rick and Morty episode? Like, we, come on, guys. Well, it was pre-Rick and Morty, but it wasn't pre-The Matrix. Like, come on. Yeah, come on. I think they just underestimated him thinking, no, he's too stupid, he'll never work it out. I think that's a fair estimation, though. It is he a fair work estimation. It out. Yeah. He doesn't. It takes everyone else to... It literally takes his family breaking into the fucking simulation to wise him up to the fact that it's not reality. It wasn't even that. It was only when he saw his real family, his fake family, fighting each other right in front of him. It's like, wait a minute. Something's <laughs> wait a weird here. This doesn't make any sense. Something seems fishy. <laughs> That is one thing I find annoying in these shows, though, where, like, sometimes one episode they'll show character development, and then they just go right back to being just the dumbest piece of shit ever. And it's just like, what yeah. happened in, like, all the other episodes? I have some notes on that when we get further into the season, where, like, Ben is allowed to grow and change, and then they just, like, hit hard resets periodically, because they need him to be difficult or, like, do a funny joke. Which yeah. is why season three is the worst season, because I had a whole yeah. two-parter where he's such regression that I hated the whole two-parter. I think this is yeah. My, gonna be my biggest beef with the season maybe i know it's still episode one but i'm just predicting this is like it there's so many cool ideas where they're like what if ben was able to grow and change and became more useful or more constructive in this space and then it's like it honestly feels like another writer stepped into the room took control and was like i don't know what are the cliff notes for ben that he's he's snarky and doesn't care about his family and they just went with that they didn't pay any attention to what came before i remember the two main things i remembered about this episode first part at the beginning when he's diamond head and he makes like a giant crystal hand out of the ground i'm like we've never seen him do that before but i spent like half the season wondering can he actually do that or can he only do it because he's in the simulation and he thinks he can do it i think he does it again at some point he makes a diamond elevator like they're in an elevator shaft oh yeah that's right i remember that i remember that too because i was like is that a thing he can and then he did it again i was like i guess yeah again the like i don't have a lot of notes except for like i think six six went out a bit like a bitch <laughs> big when time he just he got not? got like hard and i'm like yeah he sucked it the only time six six is like ever competent ever is like two minutes in the movie that's because he's and the like, boba fett of this it. universe i know but jeez yikes yeah that was a lot of references at once guys but yes i know exactly <laughs> what you mean i was like that took me a minute i just caught up then that was my processing time on that yes he is the boba <laughs> fett of this universe no the only other note i had for episode one was um that it's it's a very complicated premise for an opening episode because it relies on you knowing who the forever knights are you knowing who max and gwen are you knowing how the Omnitrix works, you knowing how Gwen's powers work, you knowing the existing family dynamic, and you also understanding that this is a sci-fi universe where simulations like this could exist. Like, it's a very complicated opening salvo for a season, I feel. To be, well, like, to be fair, it is season four. 
So yeah, like, but Connor, it's the first one <laughs> I've watched in 10 years, okay? This is about me, all right? <laughs> it took me a minute to catch up, is what I'm saying. Uh, episode 2, Divided We Stand, or as I dubbed it in my notes, the Ditto one. The yeah. one? The Ditto, the alien he transforms into. Oh, I hated this episode. Really? Wow. That's fair. Um, <laughs> largely because, again, I'm going to derail this briefly, but Ben being the worst on the beach is not fun for me. Like him just yeah. being a dick to everyone, I'm like, is that, is that what we're doing? Is that, is that, that the show now? Yeah, it's one of those ones that's like, this feels like a season one episode. Come on. <laughs> right. I do kind of like, though, when Ditto is just a dick to everyone. I find that a bit more funny. That was Maybe more fun. because they're just being dicks to each other. That, yeah. yeah. That felt more gratifying because it was like, I guess if there was more than one of him, he would also hate himself. I thought that was interesting character development. The only note I have is like two notes, which is like, hey, look, it's Ron Paul's. The voice actor for Ditto was also, you know, the original Raphael in the 80s Ninja Turtles. He was Pinky in the Brain. He was um, one of the Animaniacs. Can't remember which one. And he is Donatello in the 2012. Teenage Ninja Turtles series. He's like he a, just a Connor's just an encyclopedia for this stuff now. He always has been. <laughs> That's amazing. My the only the other note I had was uh, and this is all in caps because I must have written this in a in a fit. Um, Animo's Kraken is dope. <laughs> the whole thing is in caps. If you want to imagine me yelling that at my computer, I was like, damn, that means cool. That was yeah, my main. Yeah, I just thought. wish we actually saw more, but we only see like the tentacles. I don't know why they then pivoted to like the bug at the end. Like I would have much preferred to see. Ben have to deal with like this unwieldy Kraken thing because he he very often fly, fights flying you know bugs or flying creatures or flying people pretty much never is he like let me deal with a very large like you know multi-armed creature I thought it was a cool idea that they just kind of threw away me having yeah. flash forwards to the climax of Ultimate Alien and that being the finale basically fighting a Cthulhu-esque creature Oh, is it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. it it takes a while, but he eventually fights that, and then Vilgax like takes over and he gets the power of the Cthulhu creature and Ben has oh. to fight Vilgax. It's Good. the series gets hectic. Yeah. And that's before um, the multiverse travel. Jeez, oh, okay. Uh, um I the I had a question that's not a note. I had a question about Animo. What's his gag? Is he just like he just loves making aliens? So the original episode he appeared in, he was like, I am a world renowned scientist, but I didn't win an award. Let me get that reward. Then Ben stopped him using the aliens and he's like, Ah, these aliens. I could use these for my mutations. And that's right. been his motive for the rest of the series. So he's just like Gorilla Grodd from from DC, basically. Kinda. Kinda. Yeah, what he cool. basically is, it's like, he either reverts or like, I think it's like he evolves animals rapidly, so it's like how they would survive in like a really hostile future. Uh, okay. That makes more sense. That's that's cool. That was, that was the only question, because he comes up a few times in this season, and I couldn't quite put my finger on his shtick. He just likes mutants a lot. He's a big fan of the X-Men, but not like the good kind. <laughs> yeah, he's got he's got mutant fan number one underwear on at all times. <laughs> uh, so episode three, don't drink the water. God it damn it, Hex. <laughs> <laughs> we get to see Hex, the not the worst villain and like, oh, he's bad, uh, but he's just like, just very incompetent and it's really, it's just real dumb. It, this is the episode where it's like the, um, there's the Fountain of Youth, right? Yeah. Yeah. I have so many, there are so many implications for this existing in this universe, but also like a bunch of things that I just uh, don't make sense to me. Also, he Hex's incompetence, I just, you gotta quit, dude. You gotta like get a day job. He's Go flip going burgers or something. He's been so long. Oh, he's been was... trying, he is season one, uh, season two, then his, all his magic was destroyed by Gwen. And then season three, he just didn't rock up at all. Then season four, he came back as old and was like, give me the fountain of youth. <laughs> And then he fucks old that Hex up. Old Hex did look <laughs> funny though. I loved how old Hex looked, how his jaws just so fat and droopy. He was an unpleasant- Looks like he's been stung with a bunch of bees. <laughs> <laughs> it, okay, let, let's talk about the Fountain of Youth, because I have hella questions about this. So, the <laughs> first of all, insane addition to your story about the kid and his grandpa and uh, <laughs> riding around in an alien, to then have an actual fountain of youth that is somehow related to like the Arthurian myth is such a decision. But then also like it doesn't make any sense. So, so Max like goes into the fountain of youth and then for some reason like becomes more immature. Like I was under the impression that he still had all the same memories and yet he's acting like super young. And then that even happens with Ben when he goes in it. So like, does it, is it, 
changing your me like does it change your personality as well because it doesn't seem like it does to start with but then the second that ben goes in it's like oh isn't it funny if he's young and dumb and a baby but then he kind of is the same and has the same memories enough to use the watch like it just i think that this might be a system of how the universe works so like in this universe, if at any point, like it's like written in the rule book of like the <laughs> universe, like, if any point someone de-ages, they will have a similar mental state while having the same memories. So if that they, is. So yeah, if they okay. were like like a great like a thirty year old like scholar, and if they were reverted back to ten, but they were a bit of a dick, well there yeah. you go. Oh, I see. So it's like the Futurama Fountain of Youth. I get I, it. Yeah, I yeah, feel yeah. yeah. I feel like okay. it would be that type of thing. Also, my only note is that I'm glad that they destroyed the fountain at the end. I'm like, cool. It very much had that vibe of, like, in the fifth Harry Potter book when uh, Joe Rowling was like, okay, I've destroyed all the time turners. Are you happy? I was like, yeah, good. <laughs> Get rid of it. Um, also, Heat Blast solved this problem like he should solve every problem. Just saying. Just burn it. Yeah, burn it. Why the fuck not? Like, why isn't that his solution for all things? <laughs> oh, maybe I... Mm. <laughs> like, am I a pyromaniac or what? <laughs> what's happening? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Yeah, but I had a few things about this episode. First off, with, like, the reversion thing, I think it's, like, they keep the memories, but it's, like, their brain is also reduced to, like, a more immature state of, like, what age they were at. So, like, right. they sort of behave if they were 10, but they still also knew everything they knew up until that point. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing, even though I rag on Hex a lot, he did the coolest thing probably in all his appearances in this episode with the giant tractor mech thing. And then I got killed by Wild Pup in like two bites, so never mind, Hex still sucks. And the other thing, I also really like it when they show like the aliens at different ages. So like in the future episodes, you see them when they're more mature, so like if they're like yeah. 30 years old, and in this one you see them like if they're babies. I, I did like the, I like, I do like the, that you get to see them change and evolve, I thought that was, that was pretty cool. Yeah, I think that's like the best part of the episode, outside. I just don't have anything <laughs> to say. <laughs> It was just an episode I watched, and I'm like, yeah, I saw that. I remember this episode. I remember it being dumb. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Gone is, like, not interested. I, yeah, I, again, like, I just thought it was a weird inclusion all around. Uh, yeah, I didn't, didn't love it. It's an average episode. It's not anything special. It just had, like, an idea, and it's like, we'll roll with it and see where it takes us. Uh, episode four, Big Fat Alien Wedding. I didn't expect for them to... Uh, tackle the topic of racism in this episode <laughs> or i guess whatever the equivalent is for aliens i think it's still racism it it's so weird i don't know what they were trying to do because like is it Cause, like is it racism but i don't know even unpacking I, this has a lot of weird implications yeah it does it, it I, re I was like oh i remember they did a wedding episode i have no memory about what the rest of the episode is and then when you find like the the groom's like parents and you're like Oh, that's, that's, oh, it's not cool. Yeah, I, I don't think it's like a race thing because they're different. I think it's because they were like, they've been at war for years. Right. But then so. there isn't like actual, okay, there isn't human racism in this show. Like you never get an episode where it's like, you see humans being racist to each other. You only ever see different species of creature not liking, like it's not even racism because they're different species. Yeah. Very weird. Speciesism. Like, is species but then like the, hu the humans are fine with a human marrying an alien but for some reason the aliens are not fine with an alien marrying a human like it go it only goes one way for some reason well the parents were a bit like i don't know about this well <laughs> but they were like it seems cool with us we're just you know, uh, weird but sure whatever you're into kid whereas the aliens are like we've got to kill the humans this is unacceptable yeah, I think, like, the aliens were just like, oh, we don't want this water when they've taken, like, too many of our lives, so we'll use this as bait to, like, kill off some high-ranking plumbers or whatever. Right, yeah. That was their thing. But the other I... thing I found real weird, it's like, oh, this is one of the most daily and alien species ever. It's like, they've been, they're, like, insanely dangerous. They're, like, the plumbers' most hated adversaries. And it's like, it's just a lot of dirt. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's they're like... so dangerous. What do they do? I don't know, they throw a sludge at you or whatever. They're kind of icky. They're kind, of, <laughs> they're kind of icky and they're definitely going to stay in that wedding dress. Yep. That ain't going to come out in the wash. You're going to need some bam off or something. I don't know what you got to do with that one. Some nappy sand or something. Probably burn it. I, yeah, you got to throw that one away. The other note I had for this episode was that um, the biggest threat of all time to Ben is he doesn't want to be a quote mega dweeb, end quote, which <laughs> I was like, is that is that what we're doing? But it's, it, you know what? It tracked for his character and it. I liked the idea of an adult being like, if you don't dance well, you'll be a fucking dork. Like it was a nice like gender reversal of, I think, 
think what the show normally does where yeah. that would normally be pitched as like Ben doesn't want to be seen to be like a girl or whatever. I thought it was kind of nice that they, that a man said to him, look, if you if you don't dance well in front of everyone, you're going to look like a fool. I thought it was kind of very progressive and kind of cool. I like that. Uh, the only other parts I'm like, oh, cool. Yay, Diamond Head. Yay, um... <laughs> Cannonball, my favourites. I like them. They were good in this episode. Cannonball gets used so much more. Sorry. And Heat Blast was there. I got like two of my favourite aliens in the yeah, whole series. Yeah, Heat Blast in this once again solved the day because he solves every yeah. problem. I was like, oh yeah, they did the Sandman kind of thing. Kind of, yeah. kind of. They come well, in some. I was thinking about Spider-Man Three, but I'm like, no, they don't do it in Spider-Man Three. They probably do it in one of the cartoons where they turn him into glass. It's a similar concept. Uh, wait, how does Spider-Man Three end? Uh, oh, no, they, uh, they yeah, blow Sam him up, don't they? Yeah. No, they blow up Venom, and then Sam is like, uh, I'm, oh, he just I'm sorry he just, we, Yeah, I'm sorry, yeah, he mate. Just, he just bounces. He's like, I'm gone. But like, yeah, like, uh, this episode was all right. I kind of enjoyed it. I thought it was nice that it was like a bit more self-contained. It wasn't like the end of the world. I thought it was all right. There were a lot more of like the self-contained ones in this season. Think of the end of the world. Ben 10, Secret of the Omnitrix. So wait, this is, that was the movie, right? This is the movie. Yeah. Can I just leave this one off by saying, the fuck is the deal with I guy? <laughs> where does he come from and where does he go? Something, something, Cotton Eye Joe. Like, he just appears in an optional fight scene at the start, and then he's just not used until like the two part or for like two minutes at the end. Wait, eye guy? Which one's eye guy? Uh, he's uh, a guy covered in eyes. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's weird. I don't like, I didn't like that. I was yeah, like, can we, nah, send that back. He just appears and then leaves and he's never used again and is never explained. And it's like, I kind of like that, but at the same time, that's really stupid. It's kind of dumb too, because there are like enough, there's a large enough roster of aliens at this point that they haven't touched in a while where i'm like why are we doing new stuff like this is surely a send-off for the show let's see some of the old ones maybe because the weird thing with i guy is that the fact because like every other episode when bang it's a new alien it's either a spotlight episode like cannon bolt or wild Mind or ditto or it's just like it kind of just happens with it or it's like kind of like how upchuck happened where it kind of just happened at the end of the episode mm -hmm. yeah but at least upchuck is used in this season yeah. Oh, well, okay. I have some grievances with Upchuck, but we'll get to that when we get to the um the two-parter. I actually really enjoyed this movie. I th the 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 way I described it when I was jotting down like what I thought of it was this whole thing feels like a hallucination from a way better version of Ben 10. Like it <laughs> it, it feels like someone like just like completely hallucinated like what if a show hit every single one of its marks? consistently for like an hour and 10 minutes. This is my second favorite thing to come out of this series. Uh, it's so this good. Series. Because my first episode is obviously, which I talked in length last episode, which was the first Ben 10,000 episode. I love that episode. And then this is the second best thing I think this four seasons is done. Yeah, I went into this thinking it would be kind of a long drag and like wouldn't actually be that good and would just kind of be a cash grab. But then afterwards I'm like, damn, that was actually one of the best things in the entire series <laughs> it's probably like and i think the other thing too is like it's self-contained enough that i would almost recommend this to someone who doesn't know what ben 10 is because it's like they, they explain enough of how everything works it's this kind of self-contained adventure fucking cool and dark as well like i really like that i really like how dark it is it explores some of the aspects of the omnitrix and stuff like that which i'm sure like connor was alluding to they've clearly explored further in the future of the show but like i i cannot explain to you guys how blown away i was at the quality of this 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 was so good yeah i think yeah i think we were also like a bit blown away i was like damn this is pretty like this is really good and it has that darkness to it. You're like, yeah, it's good, finally. Right? That was exactly my thought. Also, speaking of characterization, boys. Okay, this, I love the way they wrote Ben in this. His like, yeah. his kind of crappy, snippy, whatever attitude actually comes in handy multiple times. He's forced to change and grow across the length of the, the movie. He, can I, okay, can I, can I give you the best joke of the episode? Sure. Don't worry. I've had many of these tests performed on myself. Never felt a thing. But don't you have, like, diamond-hard skin? Uh, good point. Let's get started. I don't know what you want to do in the edit there, if you want to, like, overdub them. I don't know how you want to handle that one, Connor, but, like, damn. It was just, like, it, it, it was a joke that wasn't trying to be zany or funny. It was just a decent punchline. <laughs> I really liked it. And then it was followed up with one of the coolest moments of the show ever, where they're scanning the wristwatch or whatever. Um, 
And Ben, like, apropos of nothing, is like, oh yeah, you should, when my dad gave my mom a watch, it was like engraved under the, the bottom. You should check and see if there's an engraving. And it's a really good characterization for Ben because it's like, that is the kind of thing you would say as a 10 year old when someone asks you about watches, but it proves yeah. to be extremely useful and leads them to um, the, the planet that they need to go to. I just thought the whole sequence was really cool. Yeah, it's, it's just such a good, like, movie. Even, like, Tetrax is just so good to see because he appeared, like, once, maybe twice before this episode, like, before the movie. Like, he appeared, like, he had his first appearance episode in which he was like, hey, Ben, don't be an idiot. Learn how to use your aliens. And then yeah. he, uh, he may have, did he appear again? I don't think he did. Oh. But the thing is, I liked a lot about this, but I did still have a few gripes. Mm -hmm. Number one, like, Tetrax's personality is so different, I don't really dislike it, I just found it a bit weird at the start, because, like, at, in the episode he's shown, which is, like, my favourite one of the entire series, he's, like, very, like, noble warrior, like, no fucking around, just, like, do what you have to do and then just get out, pretty much. But in this, he's, like, a lot more like Ben, which I originally didn't like, but then I actually found him to be, like, one of the funniest characters by the end of it, because, like, it just shows how much he doesn't know about, like, his own ship and crew. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> yeah, that was a funny joke. It is like, everything's a constant surprise to him. Yeah. And the other thing I didn't like, though, like, when they try to handle, like, character deaths, like, they were obviously fake outs, but, like, they just kind of glaze over it like nothing happens, which did bother me a bit. Like, I felt like they could have done a bit more, because, like, it seems like the pilot dies, and it also seems like Gwen dies at some point, and they just kind of glaze over it. Oh, like, the bald guy gets no recognition at all. I thought there was a cool... Yeah, that's, that's actually a good point. You mean Glenn? Yeah, he doesn't. I forgot his name. Thank oh. you. I, he's, like, Thank one you. of my favorites. Thank you, Living Encyclopedia. Um, oh, yeah, he's great. I did enjoy that... The, 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 when Ben thinks that Gwen has died, there's that cool moment with um, Tetrax where he's like, listen, dude, you have to like, you basically have to grow up a little bit here and you have to make sure that they didn't die for nothing. And it's a really cool like character growth moment for Ben where he suddenly realizes like, it's no longer, like he can no longer sort of uh, behave like this is a consequence free, you know, adventure just for his own pleasure. Like suddenly he realizes there are stakes and he's forced to like actually become a hero. I, I thought that was really, really good character growth um, and handled very very deftly and subtly. I really enjoyed that. When they're, they're sort of on the, they're on like the hoverboards or whatever and yeah. they're in the dark tunnel. It's a really well shot scene. Uh, I was just saying, I did like that, but I also felt like it could have gone on a bit more. But the other thing, Tetra, like, it's not the way he's, it doesn't say it like this, but the way I basically interpreted it, it's like, I was like, oh no, Gwen's dead. And he's like, oh, you think that's bad? I accidentally wiped out my entire planet and species. <laughs> it's like, that's not funny. That's okay. not that, was, that was a sad scene. I was like, dude, these are like my favorite aliens and they're all gone. It was, but I'm like, just bringing that up now. And I'm just like, why would you bring this up now? It's like, why would you bring that up at all? Why would you tell anyone this? So me, the viewer, can be like, oh, dang, dude, I really like these aliens. Yeah, the other thing, like, Tetrax is like, oh no, after that, I, he's not like, oh, after this, I'm like, I may have a mission to, like, hunt down and kill Virgo, or whatever. He's like, no, it's just I don't want him to get any other weapons. <laughs> right, yeah, I was like, dude, it's insane. Okay, tell me this, boys. Give me the Vilgax Citrix, because I vaguely remember he's like the big bad multiple times, but what's his deal? He wants the Omnitrix so he can make his own army of people with Omni like Omnitrixes. So he can have like an, his own army of like so many different aliens that can transform at any point in time. Yeah, like he's a galactic conqueror, so he wants it to like have an army to help him conquer like the entire universe pretty much. So just a really shallow motivation. Got it. Because I was well, like, maybe... Kind of, he's he... deeper than you think, kind of. It's a bit shallow, but he does a lot more with it than you'd expect. Okay. It's maybe because, like, the first time you see Vilgax, it's the season one finale. It's just a massive change of pace. It's gone from, like, oh, these villains are kind of doofy and the stakes aren't that big, too. Vilgax has basically just taken out an entire city. He's gonna blow up Mount Rushmore, probably destroy the planet, and kill everyone we've met so far. Yikes. That's an escalation. Like, I think the first time he appears, I have the equivalent, because he has, he has, cause his first form before his spaceship kind of just blows up. Several time travel reasons we won't get into, because that's Omniverse. Well, oh God. Okay. <laughs> I rewatched those episodes. Is that the time. same? Is it the same continuity, or is it a different? Uh, so uh, it goes. Oh no, I should know. Ben Ten, Alien Force, Ottoman Alien, then Omniverse. That's all the same continuity. Mm -hmm. And then the Ben Ten remake is kind of this like a. That's different. It's a remake, but I classify it in the same universe. But so wait, could... Omniverse, he's like young again, though, right? No, o well, Omniverse, what? they. <laughs> I Omniverse, think he's the same age as Ultimate Alien, it's just a different art style, so he looks younger. Oh, I didn't know that. 
in Alien Force and Ultimate Alien, he's about 15, 16. And in Omniverse, he's about 16, 17. But they do have a few flashback episodes in reference to him being 11. And oh, to right. lead up to him removing the watch. Got it. I should. Uh, I thought this was like set when he was way younger. I guess maybe like different art style, you're right. Okay. Well, the remake is set when he's 10 again. And it sort of started from the beginning. Yeah, I got you. I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Okay. Yeah. So those were all very expository questions. I think like one, one thing with the movie that, that I thought was kind of an interesting decision was the ending... <sighs> What did you guys think of the ending? I kind of found it funny how, like, Ben just, like, gets waving and he's like, Vilgax basically just, like, bites him on the finger pretty much. He's like, all right, enough of you, just yeets him into orbit. <laughs> and he's just flying through space. It's just like, huh, not how I thought this would end. I Look, I think it's kind of cool, but that might just be nostalgia. I thought it was all right. I just wasn't expecting the way big thing. Oh, odd. yeah, because, like, no one really, because all you get in the box is, like, there's a new alien going to appear. And then he just goes like, oh, here's a, here's one of your most powerful aliens. He goes way big, and you're like, oh, <laughs> that's yeah, cool. Is though, like, that's another thing that's annoyed me. On the box, it's like, a brand new, never-before-seen alien, and it's alluding to way big. But then at the start, Eye Guy, again, he's just there, with no explanation. It's like, oh, they're talking about Eye Guy. Then Way Big shows up, and it's like, oh, so they're talking about Way Big. So what the fuck was the deal with Eye Guy? <laughs> I, like, I have eye guy questions. Um, I have many eye guy questions and no answers. Two, I just want to bring up two lines of like yeah. dialogue that I really liked in the movie. And it was from Tetrax who was like, do you want to help people or is it for the fr or is it for the thrill of it? Right. Yeah, and it gave Ben that like, oh, and he had to kind of like think about it. Like it was a bit of like a hit to the gut and he's like, oh. Well, he is kind of a giant piece of shit. Yeah. Business, so that's fair. Mm. To be like, listen, he, he absolutely get called out, Ben. Absolutely get called out. And then I just like that other scene where, like, because as far as he's known, Gwen is dead. And then, like, you know, Asmus like, no, goodbye. And then, like, you know, Ben's just really mad. And he's like, I've come this far and lost too much to stop now. Yeah, but Asmus through this, he's, like, the best character in anything ever. <laughs> he's just such you, a grumpy old that? man. I just find it hilarious. He just hates everyone and just wants to be left alone. I just love these characters so much. I feel that's a big energy. I can relate to that in a big way. Just being yeah. like, get off my lawn, kids. Leave me the goddamn hell alone. I feel that. If explodes, whatever. I don't care. It's man, I'm busy, bro. Leave me out of it. I I will yeah. say I thought they were gonna do more with the when the when the watch like when the watch gets hit with that DNA wave or whatever. I thought they were gonna do more creative stuff with the watch itself in the lead up to like in the lead up to the to working out what was going on. Like I thought we were gonna see maybe like I don't know like some cool different alternate versions of the aliens or whatever, but it was just more of the same. I don't know. So was, you mean season one with the bug guy in which Ben was sick and all this aliens became sick so like heat blast was cool it's like just like ice powers or well, the episode blast, where he yeah. breaks off the face plate and then dr animo steals it so all his aliens are combinations so it gets that stink stuff. arms yeah oh cool i'm looking at a picture of cold heat blast it's kind of cool um heat blast the only one that actually gets an advantage out of that wild mutt can't see shit and just keeps running into things and forearms basically sneezes and accidentally knocks down a building he's in and he and he he's, he's, <laughs> he's got like a lot of smell under his armpits <laughs> it's just yeah. like yeah, that's gross. Roddy, yeah, send that back. Yeah, I just, yeah, kind of similar, or like even, because the combination aliens were fucking sick as well. But I was just expecting something a little different, just some flavor, but I don't know, way big to me. I was just like, eh. It's just a big guy. Who cares? It's a real big guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was cool though. Uh, anything else on the movie? It was one more thing I didn't like, but this is less a thing on the movie and more just a personal thing. So Tetrax and Six Six both appear, who are in my favorite episode. Now my favorite character is the crap guy who I don't know the name of in that episode. And I was just hoping the whole time, like, please show up, please show up, please show up, and he never did. And I was really sad. Because Grey Matter murdered him. Yeah, but like Six Six blows up like 20 times and he's still here. You got to see Six Six's face. That was the other thing. Six Six is an eldritch abomination. What the hell? At this point, all we got to see was his baby arms. <laughs> Yo, which I never understood. And now I see it. I'm like, now I don't want to understand it. <laughs> never mind. Go back. Go back. <laughs> put it back. You can't put Pandora's box. Put that shit back. We don't need to see yeah. it. Like, the only other notes I have is like, oh, I really like that the animation was a 
step up and I'm like that's pretty cool and then the music I was like yes I like the music yeah yeah I, th I, yeah, I agree I just I think like again overall super solid and made me want the rest of the season to be better like I think it was again like it was a glimpse of what this show could have been and it just left me kind of wanting to watch like Ultimate Alien and Alien Force which are so much more of this kind of stuff uh, definitely, mm -hmm. definitely the first two seasons of Alien Force have that, like, extremity to them. Like, after the events of season two, Ben gets a bit of an ego, so then he kind of, like, in Ultimate Alien, he kind of reverts a bit back, and then eventually has to progress his character arc again to become better, because he gets a bit of an ego from, like, the big amazing thing he did at the end of season two of Alien Force. So it's like, that's, that's a bit right. But, hey, I don't know, I haven't seen it since in years, so, <laughs> you know. Fair. Fair. I'm just saying, I think it was a really good indication of what the show could be. Yeah. Episode 5, Ben 4, Good Buddy. Hey, which one was this? Uh, that was the RV one with, like, the Oh, warriors. God. Uh, hated this episode. I, this might just be me. I found it very boring. I don't know. I found it average. It wasn't anything to really write home about. I thought it was all right. Like, I th I, there's a few jokes, like, well, a few unintentional jokes. You can play games in HD. That made me laugh, but, like... It, yeah, it wasn't, yeah. like, great by any means. That was literally my entire note, was, like, I it, I completely tuned out of this episode. I, The whole plot of, like, that Max's a camper van, his RV, is, like, the old school is better than all the new shiny stuff, and, like, we've done this to death a thousand times in this show. Don't need to see it again. My only other note was, like, hey, look, Ripjaws appeared. I, yeah, I remember this, because unlike Season 3, Ripjaws is actually in Season 4. I remember he's in Episode 2 for a gag for, like, five seconds just to scare people while trying to surf, and then yeah. he just stacks it, and that's the end of it. And I thought I remembered him being in this, which I did. But he only ever becomes Ripjaws when there's no water around. Like, they've just made Ripjaws a joke ever since, like, the first episode he was in. Does he have any other water-based aliens? Not really. No, but he also never goes near... He just... There's, like, one... There's two episodes relating to water. So... His was one of them from this season with Animos Kraken, where we don't see Ripjaws? No. Uh, there was an episode where they went to, like, an, under an underwater, like, hotel thing or whatever. Okay, yep. That they stole a power core from aliens, and now aliens are coming back to attack them. Yeah, and then not? there was the original episode with, like, basically the Loch Ness Monster. Yeah, which they called the Kraken. And some environmentalists, in quotation marks, stealing their eggs to sell for money. I did like that episode. Plus, it's the only time you ever see Ripjaws transformation... Thing, and it's one of my favorites, which is annoying because that's the only time you want to see it. I would love to know from a technical perspective why they sometimes use those canned animations of the transformations and other times it's just like the single flash. I would love to know why from a production perspective. I feel it's like how the Simpsons uh, couch gag can extend or be shortened depending on how much time they oh, have in the actual episode. The runtime. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah. Okay. I feel like it would just be a similar thing to that, but I always find it real cool when they're like, yeah, Diamond Head. <laughs> That's the annoying thing. Like, since season one, they barely used any. In season two, they at least added one for Cannibal and uh, Wildvine, but you only, you only see Wildvines like twice. You see Cannibals actually a lot for some reason. I can imagine why, because it's quite detailed animation to put together. Yeah, you know, and Eye Guys would be a bit gross. Ugh, no one wants to see that. <laughs> yeah. Can we just get rid of Eye Guy? No, we apparently he appears all him. the way through. Like, he doesn't appear often, but he still is in Omniverse. Oh, God, he's like a bad cold, that dude. <laughs> yeah. Episode 6, Ready to Rumble. I actually kind of like this one. I like this one as well. It was a good, like, just on its own episode. This, this was, was the wrestle one, right? Yeah, this is the wrestling yeah. one. Uh-huh. The... I really enjoyed this one. This was, the, this was the first, like, main episode where I was like, okay, this is pretty self-contained, and aside from the wedding one, I was like, this is probably one of my other favorite episodes of the season. It was, it was a good episode also because Ben was, like, doing a selfless thing. He was like, okay, I accidentally broke this laptop. I gotta get the money to fix that, so I'm gonna go into wrestling. Oh, I missed that that was his motivation. Okay. I, I must have brain-tuned out the bit where he that was the reason he needed the laptop. Okay, that makes it sense. It wasn't 100% clear at first. I'll give it... Like, yeah, it didn't... That never clicked for me. He eventually states it, I think, like, closer to the end of the episode when he's like, Hey, Gwen, sorry I broke your laptop. Uh, I see. I must have missed that, too. And then she's like, You're an idiot. It's like, finger, it's like a, a finger scanner, so only I can access the laptop to turn it on. Uh, what a boob. Uh, <laughs> also, I didn't... I didn't understand the the proposed like ben's proposed interest in wrestling makes sense right because he's like chasing the alien stuff because of the thrill of like the fighting and the action and but i didn't like 
necessarily i didn't understand like why this was the this was a good time in the season to focus on that for him because like i know it was for a selfish reason but it's probably like ostensibly the first time he's gone out of his way to do something he enjoys that benefits someone else like it's it's character development but it's also kind of like multi-purpose like it's good for ben but it's also good for gwen um i just it thought it was a weird... weird how late it is in the series yeah i I've made a note where I'm like, this season feels back to front in some ways where we open with a lot of the villains and ideas that are really heavily baked in continuity. And then we have these kind of skippy standalone adventures kind of floating in the middle somewhere. I don't really understand why this stuff wasn't at the front. And then we slowly ramp up to more and more continuity based stuff. Cause I thought this would have been like a cool, um, a cool foil episode off the back of uh, maybe like even like the wedding episode or something like that. I don't know. I thought it was yeah. weird, weirdly paced in the season. It, it, like it is a bit mumbled and like how the episodes are laid out but you're like i don't know like maybe they just didn't care as much in 2006 in comparison to like the the way that they do episodes now with like you know your gravity falls or your star right, was... the forces of evil where it's very it's it's less episodic nowadays <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, it's it's far more serialized now. Yeah, I don't know, it's, it's just interesting that they drop that in mm. the middle. I have a theory, which is like, I think from a writing perspective, these one-off episodes get written at random times by random like piece writers, like freelancers. And then I think the main continuity stuff with returning villains, that's all the main writing team. That's my theory anyway. Having scoured through Wikipedia seems to make the most sense. The only thing I found weird about this episode, though, like, the amount of the wrestlers that are, like, alien mutant people and no one cares, but the second, like, Ben turns alien somewhere else, and I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> like, there's aliens running around everywhere, there, <laughs> I, and they're just it. completely fine with it. The second one appears anywhere else, what the hell? I have noticed that throughout the whole show, which is like, is this a world where people know about aliens or not? Because I assumed not, but then, like, they were right? hunting Ben, but then they kind of were hunting Ben in season two. But then in this season, at the start of the season, I know it's a simulation, but it's a simulation of Earth. Ben, like, saves a bunch of cheerleaders as Diamond Head and they swoon for him like he's not a giant rock monster. Well, I think that's because at that point it was well established that there are these alien heroes saving the day all over the country. Oh. Okay. Because they talk about it like it's like, oh, did you see that thing on the news before? It's like they had like the forearmed guy. Oh, that's a cool subplot. All right, I didn't know that. That's like cool. it's not I know really that, a I... subplot, but it's just kind of like in the world. Well, because I know that's the case in when he's older in the Alien Force or Ultimate Alien or whichever, where it's like he's kind of a hero or whatever. But I didn't realize like that's kind of cool. I like that. That's actually that's pretty interesting. There is a good episode which I think you might like. It's as a episode in which it's called like Super Alien Hero Buddy Adventures. In oh which God. I can, and like a, an animate, they, a new TV show has come out, but it's ripping all of Ben's aliens. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and it's like very much written for like young kids. I think cool. like one of the villains is like Kitty Litter. And it's a cat who just throws trash everywhere. <laughs> that's extremely good. And like, and then like the opposing show in the context is like a, a mix of like 60s and 89 Batman. Like called like <laughs> Kangaroo, Captain Kangaroo. That's incredible. And he's like, I do my old stunts. My show was cancelled off the air because of your show. That's incredible. Pretty much Seth Green. <laughs> that's exactly my that's exactly my trash Connor, you're right. I'll watch that after this. Like yeah. It, like that was I think one of the best episodes of last season. But like that like and then Ben's like, What the hell? They're my aliens. You can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make forearms Scottish. Incredible. Episode 7, Ken 10. Yes, this episode's so good. Oh, I, I, I love... liked this more than the Ben 10,000 episode. I love the future episode. They're so cool. I would watch a whole show of this. Oh, I wish there yeah. was a whole show of this. Right? Just like him, like, bounty hunting aliens on this, like... Ah, oh, it's so cool. Because he, mm. like, the character appears multiple times throughout the series, but it's never more than, like, a one-off or a two-parter episode. Right. Yeah. And it's always, like, Professor Paradox is like, time has gone bad. Time's Eon bad, Eon is doing some mess. Here's Ben 10,000. He, um, his aliens look fucking sick. It's so cool. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, that's the thing I like, because they get so much, like, when they get older, you see how they mature and change, and I just really like that. It's so cool. Also, Ben's a beefcake in this. <laughs> he shredded. My yeah. dude is hitting the gym. I think because I love the future episodes, and I especially love like these two in this original series. 
But, but, but like that Omnitrix design, I was just like crawling up his arm. Yeah, it's like as, turned into a gauntlet instead of a Yeah, watch. it gets like bigger and bigger. I thought that was cool. Yeah, and like the fact that he's like, he just like, he's like, sure, he's a celebrity and stuff. And then it's just so cool. Like the world is really cool and really well set up. Like you go, oh, his base is right next to Mount Rushmore, which is the secret plumber base. That makes sense. They have like yeah. these other details which are just really cool it's a far more mature concept than the base show is ever like i think not just i don't mean maturity as far as like the age of the characters but just the world building and the amount of groundwork they've laid in a very short amount of time it's very impressive how cohesive it feels to have this version of the future with all of these rules around it and the fact that like ben 10 is kind of this um free agent within the the bounds of you know he kind of i don't know what, what is he like a he's like the sheriff of yeah like, Earth, of kind Earth, of yeah he like it's cool he, he, yeah. he works as the plumbers, but then, like, also is kind of his own thing. Right. It's it's very, very cool. And I think, you know, even, like, the there's a throwaway moment where Gwen turns up and she's, like, astral projecting herself while she's doing something else. And she throws out this amazing line about, like, oh, yeah, I'm just doing X, Y, Z. And it just sounds like a fucking cool side adventure. Like, all of it's just it's very cool. It's yeah. a shame that Gwen erased this timeline from existence. What? So... Just so it's oh, canon that within cool. the series, every time Ben sees his future self, that future doesn't happen. Okay. So, like, the next time you see future uh, Ben 10,000, it's in Ultimate Alien, where he's got the Ultimatrix. And I think I, this is, like, the worst version of Ben 10,000, purely from it is Because he, he can transform into his aliens, but he still looks like Ben. Yeah. So, like, yeah, and I'm like, this is rubbish. But then the, in Omniverse, the Ben 10,000 we see in that, he can combine his aliens. So That's he gets, cool. like, four-armed Shumongasaur. Wait a second, though, because... But this this episode is apropos of nothing. Like, there's no setup This is this just to a be... sequel to the previous Ben 10,000 uh, episode. Oh, okay. This isn't, like... Either... Yeah, okay, cool. And it technically sets up Ken 10 for, like, an Omniverse thing. Uh, yeah. He, yeah. He, he's, like, a whole side arc in Omniverse. Oh, yeah, I thought that the, the Ken 10 stuff was kind of interesting. Or, or Ken, not Ken 10, just Ken, Ken Kenny? Yeah. Whatever Kenny, his name yeah. is. Also, like, the idea of what's the villain? I can, it's, it's not Ken. What's the other guy? Uh, Kevin Levin. Kevin. Kevin Levin. Now, so Kevin, <laughs> Kevin, correct me if I'm wrong. Let me try and get ahead of you on this one, Connor. So Kevin is the dude who, like, has all of the aliens jammed into him or whatever. And then in the in Ultimate Alien, he's Gwen's boyfriend. So <laughs> I can never remember the type of, like... <laughs> creature Kevin. he's still human but he has like these uh powers and so like in the first episode we see of him kevin levin he can absorb electricity and because he's like 11 and Ben's like 10 so like he absorbs the he, he's doing it for bad because he, because, al he, because alliteration yeah oh his name his full name is kevin middle name e levin fuck off that, that's revealed and ben's like are you kidding me are you serious is that your actual name oh my god it is oh my god it is that is <laughs> Insane nonsense, Ben 10. But, like, so, like, he absorbs the Omnitrix and gets all the powers from that, but it corrupts him, like, mentally and physically, and he gets all, like, mutated. And so, he gets real this, gothy. Yeah, in this episode, you have, like, Kevin's son, which I don't remember the name. Devlin. Devlin, which is the name of his father. Mm. Okay. Well, and, okay. <laughs> I have a few yeah. things about this episode. One, I think the future episodes are written by different people, but they're doing a much better job <laughs> than normal people. Yeah, I want to see that show. Because, like, even at the beginning, yeah, you think, like, um, freaking... Because he's saying, like, I can't be late to another one of his parties, because the last time it was, like, oh, it was, like, Grandpa's 80th birthday, and he, like, wouldn't show up because he was too busy doing hearing and all because that nonsense. Because he was an asshole. Yeah, and then they think, oh, it's Grandpa's, like, 90th birthday or whatever. And, like, it shows Grandpa, but then it just reveals, oh, yeah, Ben has a son now, and it's his birthday. It's like, wow, that's good writing. A second thing, the fuck is Billy doing here? Oh, yeah, from Billy and Mandy's Grim Adventures. Hey, what? Uh, so, one of the aliens that's friends with uh, Ken, he is dressed and looks the exact same as Billy from the other Cartoon Network series called The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, which is a show about these two kids and their friend Death, or the Grim Reaper. Oh yeah, okay. That's a wild choice, guys. <laughs> yeah, like, I think it's even the same voice actor, it's so weird. It is, it is a bit wild, but it's pretty, but you're like, ah, oh, whatever, it's Cartoon Network, you know, ah, uh, good thumbs up. He's got the same hat on! Yeah! <laughs> What the yeah, hell? Yeah, and the same shirt. And the same type of nose. Oh, that's horrifying. And yeah, then it's just a really hot chick. Oh, that is that Ben's daughter? Gwendolyn uh, Tennyson? What? No. No, hang on. No. What? 
He doesn't have a daughter. He doesn't have a daughter, and Gwen is full name is Gwendolyn. Yeah, uh, you're saying that, guys, but I'm just hang on. Gwen and Gwendolyn are the same person. No, I realize that. Yes, I understand that, Connor. I'm saying this image oh. is tagged with Gwendolyn Tennyson. Okay, okay. Again, I haven't seen all of Omniverse okay. now, and I think I saw like the first little bit and like the snippets of like the big crossover season six episodes. Mm -hmm. But so they do. I know about they do an arc with Ben Ten Thousand. There's a few episodes of him because Ken is traveling back in time to help out sixteen, seventeen year old Ben with a few things. And then accidentally he's Doctor Animo in his ape form, and so they bring him back. And then I guess he there, there's a Ben also has a daughter as well, maybe. Well, I mean, you see his wife in the Omniverse episode, but you don't see him here. But she's also in this Ken Ten Thousand, this Ken Ten episode in the background. What the hell? I, this is what I'm saying! I'm not I don't crazy, think they guys. actually had anything written for her yet, and they expanded on it later. I think they may have retrospectively gone back. Yeah, they, uh, Ben 10 does that a lot. The other thing I would say, maybe that's one of, that's like Gwen's daughter, so it's like his cousin. Nah, so it's like but it says generation. Ben's daughter in brackets, Gwen and it's... Yeah, I see that, but that's... Oh, no, Pinterest. Yeah, but that's... Ben 10,000 and Kai Green's daughter, and Ken's sister. Yeah, so, so there's Ken's God. sister. Kai yeah, but that's Green. also in Omniverse, so I'm thinking maybe, like, at this point, that might have been their idea. I think they right. changed it. Yeah. It, yeah, at that point, it had almost been, like, it had been, like, probably, like, seven years from productions. Like, I think what like they've done... Seven years. Yeah, I, I think what they've done is they've they've retrospectively written her in as the sister, because they already had that artwork done. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. That was a weird rabbit hole, I apologize. Like, this episode's just really cool. Like, it's cool, could, like, I watch a whole show of it. Even, like, Kevin Levin's, like, ultimate form when he, like, he, because there's so many more aliens and that, and he's been in the, um... Why do I keep forgetting the name? The Null Void. The Null, the null Void. void. Yeah. Which was created by the Galvins. And it's definitely not a ripoff of Superman's Phantom Zone at all, in any way. Absolutely. Well, I mean, I haven't seen the inside of the Phantom Zone, but it looks very different to to the Null Void. Why well, in the original Superman movies, it was uh, a flat yeah, 2D flat disc, disc so... Glass. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, but, like... He just like was always the thing, and then Ben Ten Thousand just like gets like, like just gets beat. <laughs> like, it's he gets the crap kicked out of him, and I kind of enjoyed watching it. <laughs> I felt I was like this is good. This is good for me. Yeah, like Kevin's new like abomination form, as I've been calling them. He looks almost as if like if there was a Satan in this universe, it would probably look something like this. Am I right? But, like you've got the heat blast with the black fl uh, black fire, and it's like, huh. It That's does, very demonic. It does make me want to see a cooler version of Heat Blast, like with the kind of... Yeah. Give me a Ghost Rider Heat Blast situation. <laughs> That's yeah. almost just Ghost Rider. <laughs> it's pretty... Yeah, you're right. Okay, I just want to watch more Ghost Rider, you're right. You got That's me. fair. Yeah. Ghost Rider's pretty cool. It's pretty dope. Fucking Nicolas Cage out there doing his thing. Uh, like, it was just like... Because it showed, like, his difference. Uh, like, him being 10 and then him being an adult giving a 10-year-old the Omnitrix and going... Oh, So here's yeah. the Omnitrix. Here's all the safe aliens, plus a few good old classics. I thought there was a there was an element of, again, what you were kind of alluding to before with the really good writing, where it's like, I, th I thought an aspect that, that was really neat, just from a storytelling perspective, is obviously Ben's grown up and matured quite a lot, but there are still trademarks of his personality that have stuck around where, you know, a Ken kind of storms off at one point, and Ben's like, man, I don't know where he gets that attitude from. <laughs> and Max gives him this, this shit-eating grin look where he's like, Oh, yeah. don't you? And I was like, oh, that's really, like, I like that they have that. That It's more yeah, of a level playing great. field banter for them now as well. I thought that was cool character development for them. Yeah, I really liked it. I think my favorite moment in this episode, though, is, like, when Kevin actually, like, knocks out Ken or whatever, and Ben is just so pissed. He just goes way big and just freaking nails him into the ground several oh. times. <laughs> and everyone just looks over, like, what the hell is happening over there? <laughs> so good. So good. Just complete, like, a, a complete dummy spit by a dude who's got, like, the power of a god in his watch. It's very good. Yeah. Also, the only other note I want to add is just, like, a really cool, and it's it's another example of, like, retrospective writing. It's because this episode's set in the future, and Kevin has, like, a scar on his chin. Now, when we see him in Alien Force, he doesn't have that scar. And when we see him in, um, Ultimate Alien, he doesn't have that scar. And at the start of Omniverse, he doesn't. But there's, a, there's like, a, an arc, or, like, a, there's a storyline at one point in Omniverse... And then, in which, like, Ben and Kevin, they end up fighting, but, like, it's like a secret, like, Ben's, uh, like, Kevin's gonna double-cross the bad guys, but at that point in time, he's still on the bad guy's side. So then Ben ends up giving him that scar oh, on his chin. Oh, that's cool. 
And because, like, in the episode, it's, like, mentioned, like, yeah, in one of their fights, uh, Kevin got that scar. But obviously, in this timeline, Kevin was bad the entire time. That's extremely cool. And it's just, like, that is really cool. Like, that's just amazing that they're able to do that. This episode came out in 2007. That episode, probably, like, 2014. That's pretty neat. You can tell the more current writers really have respect for these episodes. Because, like, they're definitely some of the highlights of the last two seasons. I think so. And I think to the point where it's so much of what follows this season like when they wrap this season and they change the production stuff and they change the writers it's pretty clear that when they reboot the show with ultimate alien um or is it alien force which so alien comes. force was the first one yeah. alien force it's pretty clear to me that like they took the best aspects of these future episodes and they were like let's let's gear shift back a bit into teen years and try and like bring these themes forward i just think it's like it's it's really smart to to look at these and look up to them as the thing to aim for. It's the same, because it's all Man of Action who created this one, and Generator X and a few other cartoons. But, like, I think it's the same writing, like, the main writing group. Like, I, I think for, like, random episode writers, like, sure, that would be interchangeable. But, like, the main group of people, like, it's the same showrunner. Like, for, like uh, I don't remember his name, but, like, he did the original series, uh, Alien Force, and then uh, as much as he could have Ultimate Alien before he passed. But, like... Like, he, it was, like, pretty much the same team throughout the whole series, and even into the remake. So, on the DVD of the, of the Ben 10 Season 4 copy that everyone has at home, <laughs> uh, it is Episode 8, Goodbye and Good Riddance, which is the second, outside of the future episodes, What If episodes. It's the second one that starts off with a comic book going, many stories have a different opening, and some have a different ending, and blah blah blah. Here's, an, and the previous one being Gwen 10. I do think this is the canon ending. I, like, I think it was real smart in the writers to, like, it feels a bit smart, but it's also a bit like a, we don't really know what we're going to take the series, we're thinking about doing another, like, run of this, so we're just going to have this as a what if, just in case we want to do something different. Because in this episode, yeah, like, Ben's revealed to the world, pretty much, as Ben. Yeah. Do you, th I can't decide if it works as a concept or not. Like, I thought it was good, but it just, I think even particularly that fight with, um, I'm going to say his name wrong, but it's name wrong, but is Vil Vilgax? Yeah, Vilgax. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. The one in the middle, like at the school or wherever it is. Um, and then you've got, you know, Ben's dad next to him or whatever. It kind of felt like, I don't know, it felt like a, a daytime sitcom version of Ben 10, <laughs> where it was like, and his dad's back and they're chums and it's everyone's, everyone, everyone's friend. I don't know. It was weird. Mm. So it was totally very strange. I watched this episode twice. I watched it first time when I was watching the whole series and then watched it again last night because I'm like, I just want to watch this episode. And I think by itself, it's it's fine. Like, it has some good stuff, but it's just fine. But within the context of like, okay, you've been watching four seasons, it's about to wrap up, I think it's better. Oh, really? Because you're in that moment. Because because when I first watched the episode and then like when he's Wildvine going, where am I going next? And like, home. And he's like, what? Because Wildvine has the best reaction faces. And then yeah. you realize that it's like, oh, the sum is it. That's it. He's going home. That's it. And I was a bit like, oh, oh. So then I proceeded to buy the rest of the series. Uh, I see. I was like, I, so I, is... <laughs> I now own all of Omniverse and as of last night, all of Ultimate Alien oh, no. and every single DVD I could get oh, my God. hands on for Omniverse. Oh, God. So Connor's down the rabbit hole. This is not sponsored by Ben 10, but... <laughs> No, I'm going to complain was... about it, because Wait, they didn't <laughs> finish the DVD releases for Omniverse. No. They, they did the first three seasons, that's all on DVD, then half of season four, half of season five, and that's it. That's very odd. There are eight He's seasons. been ranting about this for a week. Why? Why not just finish season four and five, at least? This has been Connor's gripe corner. <laughs> like, I just, like, it's, it's ridiculous. And like, and even, so there's eight seasons, right? And you can buy, and on YouTube and like Google Play, you can get up to season seven on digital. Mm -hmm. The only place you can get season eight is on Amazon in the US or Apple. Oh, like iTunes, yeah. Yeah, it's just so weird. It does happen. <laughs> Distribution rights are very complicated, let me tell you. I'm just, yeah, that it is, and it's very complicated, and that's why I hate streaming services. Yep. But like, <laughs> it's just, like, come on. Now my collection will forever be incomplete because some people will be like, no one's buying the DVDs. Which they're correct, but It was still. just Connor. Connor's like, I'm buying them. And sure, it took me, like, probably it was four years after the series finished. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on. I have a question though about this episode because I was like, it not to completely derail. I was at the end of the. the, the yes, gripe, the end or was of the rant. Okay. Just Gone. I was like, I'm gonna sulk for the rest of the episode. Um, I I think like it it didn't work for me because I kind of came at season four relatively fresh, and it just felt like yet another missed opportunity to do something interesting with these characters to then yet again hit the reset button. I know it's out of continuity, but they do it so many times in continuity that I was just like, Ugh. I was just like, can we just commit? It was kind of yeah, that was how That's I felt fair. about it. Yeah. That's fair. It, it is a bit of like, and there are a few missed opportunities. I do like that Vilgax is like, oh, this is your home. This is your father. I give you the only. Right. Yeah. Like, I, that, I, was, that cool. was cool. But then like the fight at the end, I'm like, that kind of sucked. Well, he used yeah, the Rolly okay. guy again. When yeah. Vilgax is at Ben's house though. So he has his dad and he basically destroys the entire house. May I point out we don't see Ben's mum for the rest of the episode? No, no. She appears at the end. Does she? Yeah. <laughs> I, <laughs> You're when like, I did she get I, iced? <laughs> <laughs> like at the very end when they're like oh so uh i would invite you to dinner but um uh, we don't really have a kitchen anymore and she's there and then grandpa max is like oh i can cook up some food and he's like you cook oh, yeah. no we're eating out and then the joke's like ah ha 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 he can't cook because That's he funny, cooks like he's, tentacles he still can't cook it's funny and i'm like it's, it's not it's jo it's jokes it was cool to see diamond head of the school reminds me of the movie the live action movies oh Speaking of, you know what this episode is in continuity with? The live-action movies. What the fuck? Okay, first of all, you know, I'm not even going to touch that. Okay. That's... Both live-action movies <sighs> are in continuity with this episode. It's the same time. Why? Timeline. Would... Who? For who? And why? And but how? But also, the, the second live-action movie must take place with, in some form within the main... In the Bren Prime canon purely because of an alien nanomech who appears in the live-action Alien Swarm movie is also in Alien Force and Ultimate Alien. Uh, uh, and okay. the reason he got the alien was under very specific circumstances, so it had to have happened at some point, but maybe not in the live-action way. It was this timeline is a mess. Yeah, there are I'm so many that. dimensions and timelines. I had to, it was like a video I was watching from like the ink tank, and I was trying to understand how all the timelines God, work. Yeah. Like, okay. It's worse Actually. than the fucking cursed child over here. No, it's about as complex as Doctor Who sometimes. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, well, that can't be confusing at all. It's not as complex, but it's getting there. Yeah, uh, oh, well, yeah, new Doctor Who definitely jumped a shark on that front. <laughs> oh, Ugh. boy, did they. Someone get Chris Chibnall the fucking taxi so he can go home. That man's drunk at the wheel. <laughs> um, this, uh, this episode could... Let could have led up to the Ben 10,000. Yes. It could have, but like we're like, we don't know. It could, but maybe not. I just give me a limited Ben 10,000 TV show. Just give me like a 10 episode hey, run. Adult Swim. Hi, nice to meet you. We've got this pro property called Ben 10, owned by Cartoon Network, which you are very affiliated with based on your Samurai Jack season finale. Yeah, well, we guys... would like a limited run Ben 10,000. Thank you. This has been my TED Talk. Yeah, I've been watching shit out of that. Yeah, I got nothing else to say about that one. I just, I felt it was kind of a wet fart in comparison to the movie and the other two finales. The two-parter, rather. So now we're going to go to the final two episodes of the series, Ben 10 versus the Negative 10 part. We got a good two-parter. <laughs> we finally got a good two-parter. <laughs> oh, are they historically crap? Uh, the last two-parter was the worst episodes of the series. <laughs> Oh yeah, there was a two-parter at the end of three. The difference is, the like, most of season three was, like, Ben getting, like, the Halloween aliens. He gets, like, a werewolf, a mummy, Frankenstein. <laughs> what? And it's all building up to okay. the end where, like, Ghost the Freak Frankenstein is in the two-parter. Yeah, he gets, there's, there's Ben Wolf, there's uh, Ben Mummy, and then Frankenstrike. That's Ben 10. Oh, yeah, that's one thing I forgot. The mummy actually is used again in Ben 10,000 for the only thing Ben knows what he can do. Grabbing things slightly far away with bandages. Ben That's ben. it. Halloween monsters. Oh, if, you get, if you're typing in Halloween monsters, you're going to get, like, the Omniverse arc in which he goes to a Halloween planet in which all those aliens exist. That's, like, their home world. You'll be glad to know that uh, I guy has come up as a Halloween monster. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> He's he everywhere. Was, he, he was in such a bad episode, they're just like, nah, don't worry oh, about there it. There you go. Here's a picture of the three of them. Oh, the mummy's kind of cool looking. Yeah, they're cool the mummy looking. looks cool, but mummy, the mummy is like the most underused thing next to like eye guy. All he can do is grab things from a distance and maybe yeah, hold someone down. He's shitty wild vine. <laughs> yeah. The Frankenstein guy looks dumb. He's bad. He's, he's the most used one. He's got a bad design. I don't like it. He doesn't. I don't. It's not like. I wouldn't say it's bad, but it's like not like. It's like oh, that's really he cool. looks it's like better in Ultimate Alien. I. 
let me rephrase. It lacks any originality. Or yeah, that's fair. that's fair. Whereas at least the werewolf, it's like, oh, it's a werewolf, but it's kind of got robot stuff happening. And it's got something. like a, it's got the face like the predator. It, yeah, oh, that's true. Yeah, and shoots out sonic stuff. waves. That's upsetting. Well, that's the thing. That's the thing I find different with Frankenstrike. He's got like two big Tesla coils in his back. Yeah, he does. That's true. Wires and shit that he can connect to things to zap. Oh, yeah, like I... it's all building up to Ghost Freak, but the entire time Ben's just a massive dick. He's like, like I don't need anyone. Usual. I work alone. And you're like, Ben, have you not been paying attention to the last three goddamn seasons? Is Ghost Freak different than Big Chill? Uh, yes. yes. So Ghost Freak is an alien that was then broke out of the Omnitrix. Oh, that's right. Yeah, Ghost In... Freak's horrifying. I remember that. <laughs> He's yeah, terrifying. The... It's scary. I don't like him. He like, is, like, one of the I best villains, but he just has the worst two-parter. And he also has a massive plot hole. So, like, the original thing is, like, oh, you can't get DNA from a ghost, idiot, so they just shoved an entire ghost in the Omnitrix. That's And then it got out, and that's Ghost Freak. <laughs> and were they... Sub Wow, that's really poor so planning. So Ben was surprised because he didn't know, but it's obviously just like Asmuth is like, okay, well, there's a population of planet of like Halloween monsters. There's one that's like literal ghost. You can't get DNA from a ghost. Oh well, get in here. <laughs> Yikes, that is poor planning. And then yeah, yeah and then Ben's then... like, what the hell's happening? And then like Ghost Freak's like, you're an idiot. <laughs> Christ. Yeah, but then like Ghost Freak's weakness is like, oh, we can't stay out in the sunlight or it like dissolves. He gets because killed, he's not full. Gets killed in the episode he's in. He's then resurrected in the two-parter. He's then killed again. <laughs> and then, when he disintegrates from basically being thrown into the sun, that's when Ben somehow gets DNA of a ghost. By basically, he means literally. They're in cool. space. Well, I'm glad that the show never made sense. Um... That's a lot to process. The yeah. note I had for episode, for this episode, for this two-parter, well, I got a few, but the main thing was how good is it that they unironically have all of the monsters, all of the aliens in giant trench coats break into Fort Knox like it's a 30s, like, pulp detective story. I fucking oh, love that. Oh, hang on. It was the, um, it was the circus freaks. Yeah, it was so cool. They, like, whipped off the trench coats and they're like, we're here. And I was like, what is <laughs> happening? What? <laughs> so... The circus, so there was, in season one, there was an episode with a, a psychic vampire who was a clown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. these were, like, his lackeys. But then he got defeated by Ghost Freak, because Ghost Freak is terrifying. And so they, like, ran off to work with, like, a few other people. And so now they're working for, like, the big people, like, the, the forever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought and that was just, cool. It's just so good to go, oh, they're back. Oh, yeah, that's cool. That was fun. Also, we will no longer call the main villain of this episode the Forever King. He shall now be known as Sauron. <laughs> this is true. This is true. That's fair. I thought also, it was. Also, as I was hyping up in the last episode, Forever Ninja. <laughs> that was dope. He was cool. I liked him. He was cool, but he gets taken out like a bitch. So do all of the bad guys in these. these this yeah, but of most of them bodies. are used to getting taken out by like bitches. That's true. I thought it was cool to have the, the Forever King be like an ex-plumber. I thought that was kind of a, a, an interesting twist. Like it did explain, it, it, yeah. it definitely explained why they would have all this info about Fort, Fort Knox and whatnot. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it was like a cool, like that like character was like cool. And it was like, <laughs> I think, yeah, I have, there's a scene in which the, ga like the acid gas like guy's like, why am I following you? And then he basically just like throws him across the room and pretty much says, I find your lack of faith disturbed. Yes! Oh yeah, he's literally he Darth does. Vader. It's very good. Uh, like... It's probably copyright infringement, but it was good. No, this franchise loves its Star Wars references. They're, like yeah. again, you have Boba Fett before. Yeah. And he gets taken out the same way each time. His jetpack fucks him over. <laughs> That's amazing. I also had that, that Gwen several times in this episode attempts to contribute and then someone else steps in and fights the bad guys for her. This happens like four times. It's very <laughs> weird. I don't know what was going on there. Yeah, but a few other things about this episode. The bug guy and the biker lady, who I think the name is Roxy. I forget I, the bug guy's I name. I was so excited they're, when she appeared on the screen. Like, yeah, they're both one-off villains from the first season. And you see them come back now. And it's cool because they're actually changed design a lot. The bug guy is actually a bug guy now, not just a weird guy who can control bugs. He's literally a bug who's freaky as shit, might I add. Like, he actually has predator's mouth. Yeah, he's, and then he's unpleasant. Roxy, she's got, like, almost night-looking arm. So I think she, like, got that from the forever nights probably yeah because she had no power because the previous power came yeah. from a robot from from vilgax but d dude when she appeared i was like oh it's my favorite episode from like season one dude she's back <laughs> yeah and i'm just in the, like great connor's having a great time and i still don't have my crab <laughs>
Amazing. <laughs> Truly amazing. Also, I guy shows up again. They give him a new power and he's gone within two minutes. Yeah, right? <laughs> so like he quick. Can, it's like, oh, he can combine his eyes to then make bigger eyes, which can then shoot freeze beams. Excuse That's... me, but what just happened? I don't think gone. that ever happens again either. It doesn't. Well, he doesn't need to because he never Is comes he back. Is he shown again? I don't I know. I appears, but like not very often. Yeah. Because like by a, by by Omniverse, he has like I think he meant he's he has like closer to seventy aliens like that he's unlocked. Like he's he's going through it, but like oh no, oh. I just have in all caps going like it's the it's the girl Road Warrior. She's back. I just <laughs> found the name so... of the guy I like. The crab guy, like, do you know what his name is? What's his name? His name's Crab with two A's. Oh, stop it. God damn it. God damn it. That's the pits. That's truly the pits. He's still my favorite, and it looks like he shows up in later seasons, so I can look forward to that. Oh, that's good. The only real complaint I have about this two-parter is that Ben and Gwen are still bickering. Yeah, but, like, it's a bit more validated It's a bit this more time, valid, but at least there's like, a reason. Oh my god, shut up. Also, it's the yeah. solution to the plot because they they're bickering they suddenly realize like what if the bad guys also bickered and that is their solution that saves the day which is That's nonsense bad. if you ask it's me it's ridiculous <laughs> but like still whatever it's like nah. it's a, at least there was a plot reason for it also ben uses a gun in this episode and it's by far more effective than any of his aliens <laughs> see my <laughs> see my earlier point <laughs> he uses a gun in the movie doesn't he yeah he does yeah. because um as Smith has taken the omnitrix he's like cool gun beep, beep, beep. He's right way on. better with the gun than with any of the aliens. And also, I'm... yeah, like, he never misses a shot. Like... Right, he's 10. How much shooting range practice is this kid getting? No, it's all video games. I, just Isn't because... Isn't obvious that fighting games make you really good at shooting yeah. things in real life? I play a lot of Dark Souls. Am I going to be good with a handgun? Probably not. <laughs> no, but you can definitely roll with a broadsword and be fine. Absolutely. I can hold that shield and do my good rolls, okay? But I'm just saying, I ain't going to be hitting hitting any anything in the nine ring with that, that Glock that I got right there in my hands, all right? But yeah. again, give everyone a gun all the time in this show. The guns are so powerful. Yeah. <laughs> Rant uh, over. Sorry. Just yikes. No, nah, it's fair and it makes sense. I don't think any of his aliens... Like, a few aliens have, like, projectile weapons. Yeah, like, Diamond Head Stink Floor. Heat blast upgrade. Yeah, but that's why like Heat that's blast it. and Diamond had are like the best because they could, they're like up front and from a distance. Yeah. Also, that episode I don't know which season it is. Connor will know for sure. The episode where they go to the concert, and there's like the, the there's a giant like water creature and season heat three. Blast. It was a terrible episode because Ben and Grandpa kept bickering. That's right. But Ben can like the oh, Heat yeah, blast man. can fly. Or <laughs> I'm pretty sure he learns that in season one. No, I don't know. I don't think it was season one, but he just does yeah, it at one I, point. And you're like, okay. I remember he Never works out he can sort of fly the first time when he fights the megawatts, and he sort of learns more when he's fighting Roxy. Then at one point, he just doesn't show up for a while. Then he shows up, and he's just flying everywhere. And it's like, oh, cool. Yeah, it was like, it's weird that he doesn't just always do that in every situation. Also, they just introduce Cooper. He's just like, oh, here's Cooper. And we're like, never seen him before. Why introduce that in the finale? <laughs> Does he show up again? Yeah, he's uh, he's like one of the main character. like side characters in like Alien Force. I made the mistake of uh, YouTubing Heat Blast, and I'm now looking at the live action Heat Blast, and he's <sighs> horrifying. Have you seen live action Diamond Head? He looks so weird. I don't know if I want to see live action. I get what they were them. going for, but like, I don't. I can't wait to cover the movies. Uh, but can I, I need to be there for that because this is a monstrosity. <laughs> okay. I, yeah. I just gotta. I just gotta buy. I'm gonna spend like money, real life money, on the DVDs for the. I remember liking the Alien Force. I liked that live action movie. I'd never liked the original one. I thought it was rubbish as a kid. So. Hmm. I'm just, uh, so I'm just trying to think of like any other notes over like the two episodes. I, I don't really have that many. Like, I know for the second part, I've just written one of the most iconic cars in the 21st century. I'm assuming as in relation to the rust bucket. <laughs> it must be, yes. <laughs> but it's just I, no context. That is a great It could note. be the Forever Nights car that gets blown up immediately. No, because I feel like I've been like, yeah, the rust bucket. Yeah. It does get nuked Wait, that is one thing I just remembered. Like, because, like, the Forever Ninja and Forever King leave, and this car pulls on, like, there's no way in hell the Forever King is going to fit in that car. <laughs> he's very big. Yeah. He's so large. Maybe he's sitting on top or something. Like, he straps himself <laughs> to the roof racks, you know what I mean? We just got a booster seat on top of the car. Because it's like... Oh, yeah. Skating across the ground because it's just so heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just imagining them going through a drive through with him sitting on the roof. Speaking of Star Wars references, Red, uh, the, uh, the Forever Ninja just has a lightsaber. Yeah. 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 
He just at, does. At that point in the episode, I was so fatigued by the volume of like references and continuity. I was like, I guess lightsabers are fine. Well, I mean, the normal Forever Knights still have sort of laser swords. Yeah, he does. That's true, but he does straight up have a lightsaber. I, I do like the canon of yeah. like this universe. I know it's like done obviously because it's a kids' cartoon. They kind of have, like police officers like, firing real bullets, but like. Every like every police officer just has a laser gun, so it's just like in this world we went from bullets to lasers at some point. Yeah, that is. There were never bullets. There were never. Maybe they don't. Maybe they never had real guns. Like they just only had laser guns. Well, because there's never you never see ballistic rounds in the show the whole time, which it's a kids show. It's not overly surprising. But even like the plumbers, all of their guns are like energy based at all times. But that makes sense for them because you know like they're going off the other worlds and stuff. So well, that's our assumption. But maybe that's not the yeah. reason. Maybe they just never have been bullets. I mean, that's a. I know that in Omniverse they do travel back in time to George Washington at some point. So like okay. from another from like the last arc of the series. But like maybe they have bullets in that one. I don't know. I'm That's one of mortified that there is time travel. George, uh, George <laughs> Washington did for, did form the plumbers. Like that is canon. Of course. Why wouldn't he? I mean, that makes sense for why it's the basis at Mount Rush. Uh, yeah, it does. Like, it's like, oh, right. that's, yeah, that, that's... Oh, yeah, half of Mount Rushmore gets destroyed in this episode. <laughs> yeah, that's right. This is my Upchuck gripe. This is the last note I have. The, the, cool. the, the, they solve the day with Upchuck, the, my least favorite hero. <laughs> I just, he's silly. He's just real silly. He just eats stuff and spits it. It's nothing. It's nothing. That sounds like such like a title for like a like a video like a, a video essay esque or like like an actual essay like a like a it's like Upchuck, my least favorite hero. <laughs> it does. That sounds like something I would make and yeah. be very serious about. At least at least I find Upchuck kind of original because he, he's not I guy. Basically, that's it. He's not I guy. <laughs> you satisfied as long as I guy's not in the mix. Just like because the thing is I guy because like on the season four art and that they show Ditto front and center which is fair he's actually used a lot they have eye guy like right near him they show him off a lot like on the main menu of the dvd he's like the main staple ditto's not even on there it's just eye guy and it's like wh what even are you this annoys me so much <laughs> this episode of the That's... retrospective is called eye guy the eye guy problem <laughs> what's eye guy what's he doing how's eye guy going this is just the eye i guy got a problem with eye guy the I Got Mystery Files, oh, man. Yeah, I like I... that we all have a different gripe with the show. Mine's that they didn't release enough DVDs. Karen's that I Guy just exists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mine uh. is make. Why isn't he boss in all of them? I think. Also, yeah, I just it. But I don't know. I just I thought it was a I weird. I like Upchuck. I think he's all right. I gather you both do, and I feel like I'm the odd man out here. Him saving the day by just eating it, I'm like, okay, that's kind of funny. I find it alright. I'm like, it's dumb, but I'm like, it's 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 just it's dumb enough that I'm like okay with this. I like Upchuck because he seems like an alien Ben would actually use. He's that, like that's Ditto. True. He may not be extremely useful, but he's something he would actually use just because. Because he's funny. It's so uh, he eats stuff and he spews it up. <laughs> and he has a different power to every other alien he's ever really had. He has no other... Like, Heat Blast has a, a fire projectile. But then, like, you could just and use that more than other situations. Like, Heat Blast right. is more relevant than most other aliens. But, like, there are certain situations in which you need speed, like Accelerate, or, like, you know... Mm -hmm brute strength like forearms but even then you have heat blast but the, my point ostensibly is there is never a situation where you need upchuck mm. well you say that but then i cast my mind to the generator x ben 10 crossover oh god okay. we are not getting into this crap now oh my god all right all <laughs> right so one. the living encyclopedia begs to differ but that is fine this we've been recording for over an hour and a half now we're not starting to talk <laughs> about another crossover for a future series that hasn't happened yeah we can't do that one thing i thought of the series as a whole like all the seasons in that mm -hmm. forearms is name dropped more than he's ever used there are so many episodes where ben's like okay time to go forearms doesn't get four like the person he tries to change into the most and gets the least is forearms i think that's really good characterization for ben though right because he's a 10 year old like yeah he's always just going kid. for big punch man the big punch guy which makes sense to me yeah but then he's like wait diamond head's just as strong and also has bullets and can and just create things and yeah, he gets diamond head all the time yeah and heat blast is fire yeah a T boss is basically a human nuke, like you know what I mean. Is, like the well, we haven't even come across the actual legitimate alien nuke that Ben has. No, 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 no. Atomic. No, no, no. 
But yeah, not the end of this yet. No, but um, like the ones I would say are like the staples the original would be like, or at least you would originally think would be like Heat Blast, Wild Mutt, Four Arms, and Diamond Head. They'd be like the main four probably. Wild Mutt and Four Arms are barely used, especially Wild Mutt. I think he's used like maybe twice in the entire season four, plus the movie. And but, like, yeah. Forearms either gets a whole episode dedicated to him, or maybe he's in it for like a couple minutes. But like, he seems to get forearms more when he needs to start talking to someone mid battle. Like, the amount of times he's been in like a diplomatic situation, but he's also forearms. That's a very good point. Like, yeah, it because well, when he's. So often. When he's the dog, he d- it's not like he can emote very well. Well, he tried yeah, that like, one time, but it didn't go out well with the other yeah. dogs. It's always like he's fighting someone, then something happens, then he feels the need to like try and reason with them or something. And it's always when he is forearms. It is never anyone else. Yeah, like in Ready to Rumble, he did it with Kevin Levin. He I can't decide if that's clever writing or not, that the kid always reaches for the big punch man. And whenever he gets big punch man, he always ends up talking his way out of it. Can't decide if that's clever writing or not. Or just happenstance of the situation. It's just, yeah, or if it's just, conv- it's just, yeah, coincidence and it keeps happening. All I know is that the writers of this show like Diamond Head a bit too much. No, like, there's no, nothing wrong with Diamond enough, Head. Though. He's really cool. But he's a bit overused. Like, at least look at Rip Jaws once again. Okay, ago. yeah, that's fair in the Rip Jaws circumstance. I'm like, yeah, Rip Jaws should appear more because he doesn't really appear again. Or ben doesn't really use Rip Jaws again, ever. I could count all of Rip Jaws' appearances in one hand of the entire franchise. <laughs> <laughs> he's just not near water enough. Yeah, it's a very, like, context specific use for that one i think like overall though like I, I don't know the my 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 issues with the season were largely the same stuff we talked about before getting into it like it just it feels so much like they often for the sake of it being a kid's cartoon reverse so much of the characterization and character development just for the sake of like it's an easy setup for an episode like it seems like sometimes instead of taking the time to work out how they could do the episode differently they just go ah fuck it ben is back to where he was at the start. I find yeah. that really frustrating. That is with a lot of shows, though. Even not, like, even not kid shows. Like, there are some shows like Rick and Morty, Proper 99, stuff like that. Like, they're gonna have a season finale character has massive growth. It's instantly gone in the next episode, and it might be thought of again around the next season finale. It seems That's like true. character growth's usually only safe for those areas, and then it's just gone again. Yeah, it depends how you look at it. I mean, like, I think Rick and Morty's probably an interesting use case because there's so much of that that's relegated well, to the like, realm it's of sort of changing more in the later seasons but like early on definitely they try and have character growth and then it just started kind of off nah. episodic became a little serialized and then went back to episodic well it's as, it's ostensibly a sitcom like it's it's the it same structure it's the same structure as community like it's just dan Harmon being way too clever for his own good but he's like hey, it's a sitcom but it's pretending to be sci-fi and stuff don't worry about it so i think overall this is the second best season I, th- I still think season two is just a bit better. It's definitely better than season three. Oh yeah, way better than fact. season three. I don't know how to put it with the other two though, because like I really like the other two and I have them close together. Like yeah, I'd probably. S- uh, it's just now that I'm looking back at it, there were just kind of a lot of just nothingish episodes, like the Ruts Bucket one. The only one didn't. Re- the wedding one didn't really amount to anything, but it was still good. Same with the wrestling one. Like there just didn't seem to be as many like important episodes, but they were better quality. That is a good point. I feel like for me, it'd probably be on par with the first season, because they both have like a mix of like this episode's not much, and this episode's actually pretty good. I don't remember what I gave the first season. I think it was like seven or eight. I'd probably put it like just beneath, like a six point eight or something. I'd nah, put fair, it like fair. just beneath season one, just because I have a lot more nostalgia for it. Like I've I had barely seen any of these episodes up until this rewatch. Like, I remember seeing the perfect day from, like, when his bullies were, like, turned into big Hulk monster things. I remember that part, but none of the rest. And then, like, didn't know Ditto was a thing. Didn't know, didn't know Ditto was a thing. I mean, I never saw any episodes with Ditto. He's only in two of them. I, still, those two, I saw right. those two a lot when I was a kid, so I, I guess... I love that Connor's encyclopedic brain is like, but how would you not remember every detail <laughs> about it? Like I do. Like, I know what minute of the episode he appears in. <laughs> Yeah, I know, the voice actor, come exactly, on. Exactly, like, yeah. I know what you mean, though. Yeah, it is, it is weird, like, when an alien crops up and you're like, huh? Who the f- what is this? Look, we haven't- I have- I have- I ha- so far, I haven't hated an alien- Like, I guy is not great, but I haven't hated any alien. Although I know for Alien Force, there is an alien I do hate. 
I don't like the rolly guy. Oh, what? I find I just it's silly. I don't know. <laughs> I, I I guess I I, I like him. Cannibal? He's not like a is favorite, but I'm like, yeah, he's alright. I like him. He's got some good stuff. Wait, are we talking Cannibal? Or yeah, sorry, Cannonball. Guy? I originally didn't like Cannibal because he's like so boring, but then he gets used a lot more in the later two seasons. But he's actually used well, and that's the thing. Like Cannibal basically replaces Wildmud as one of the staples as well. Mm, yeah. Uh, on about that note, uh, where can people find us on the internet, interwebs, wherever? People find people. Do I go first? Kyron has no way to I don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> he literally uh, has nothing. Uh, hello, hi, uh, uh, editing Connor here. Uh, don't mind me, just coming in to say something quick. So this was originally called recorded in August. Now, fun fact: David changed the name of his YouTube channel and then website from the old name, which he states of where you can find him. To his new name. So the old name was DCM Works, and now it is called Zero Indent. I hope I'm saying that right. And uh, the links will be in the description for it, and you can go about the channel and the website. I just thought I'd say, because it's a little bit outdated, and that's really my bad. It took a long time to eventually get to editing this. Oops. Anyway, uh, back to... David talking about where you can find him. Uh, you can find my video content at youtube.com slash DCMworks. I make kind of similar stuff. Uh, I have the Art for Artists podcast, which you can find on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast. Uh, I also, uh, my first published novel has been out for about a year now. The second one's coming out soon. You can find those at maynardtrig.com. Uh, I think that's about it. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at DCMA Hate Pie. I think, I think that's me. Yeah, and as always, for me, it's Twitter at Goddamn Robots, it's uh, Letterboxd at What's His Face, it's this YouTube channel. Yeah. I think that's everything. Sounds like I just kind of rock up when I feel like it. <laughs> Again, Karen is just on the channel. That's about it. Thanks for having me, guys. Oh, no problem. This has been great. Yeah, alright, so I'll end the Discord recording now and then I'll stop mine.